In the first reading today, we hear this real call of Ezekiel, or call of the Lord through Ezekiel, of the Lord calling His people. He's saying, remember, I created you. I formed you. You were this, this child, and I helped to make you beautiful. And then what would you do? You went off. You went off from me. You see, the whole story of our faith, the whole salvation history, is a love story. God is so in love with His people. And yet, we often look at it as God is out there ready to smite us and, you know, He's wagging His finger at us. But He's saying, no, I am so in love with you. He says, I adorned you with jewelry. I put bracelets on your arms, a necklace around your neck. You were adorned with gold and silver and all. You had fine flour and honey and oil for your food. You, I gave you everything. I gave you everything. But you were captivated by your own beauty. You used your renown to make yourself a harlot. I remember one time someone coming up to me and saying, Father, why is it that the prophets refer to uh, prostitutes, about Israel becoming a prostitute? Wow. The reason is because God wants us to recognize He's in this covenant of love with us. It's marriage. This isn't just we were, we were bowing down to you, Almighty God, and then you know, we went off to another direction, but rather it's the image of marriage. The Bible can be summarized in five words. God wants to marry us. God wants to marry us. And when we turn away from Him, it's not just like, oh, whoops, I broke the speed limit! Oh, you better give me a ticket! It's not like that, but rather, it's God is saying, you broke my heart! You broke my heart! We are in this trust relationship of a marriage. And you went off after other things like prostitution, like harlotry. You're captivated by your own beauty. But I love this last line. Now, if you look at the lectionary, you'll see, or if you have like a little Magnificat or something like that, you'll see that this is taken from the book of uh, Ezekiel chapter 16, 1 through 15, and then it skips all the way to 60. So they skipped over whole huge amounts of this, this story. But at the end of it, yet I will remember the covenant I made with you when you were a girl. And I will set up an everlasting covenant with you that you may remember and be covered with confusion, that you may be utterly silenced for shame. Why? Because I'm going to shame you and say, I can't believe you did what you did? No. When I pardon you for all you have done, says the Lord. You ever have that happen in your life? When you've done something unspeakable to a friend, to a loved one, to a family member, and they forgive you. And you're just, what? I remember uh, in my first parish, a man came to me, he says, you need to pray for my wife. She has, we're not sure exactly what she has. She's going to the doctors. We think it might be cancer. And then he just started bawling. He says, I can't live without her. He said, I was unfaithful to her, and she took me back. I, I can't live without her. I can't live without her. Man shamed by his sin because his wife forgave. And God does this to us. He says, I forgive you. I pardon you. Despite all that you have done, I call you back to my heart. This day, may we not be enamored by the gifts that God has given us, but rather by the relationship He has with us. That He's saying, I want to marry you. I give you my very body, blood, soul, and divinity to unite your heart, your body, your soul to my being. And may we look upon our sins and say, wow, God has forgiven all of this. Lord, I am yours.